Okay, now what I'm going to have Connie do is demonstrate um, what you need to do to prepare the probe and um, the patient for the transvag skin. Connie, why don't you go ahead and share what you've got. Okay. I always want to approach this in a very professional manner. And I want my patients or my clients to feel comfortable that, I, you know, the, the difference and the separation with the gloves is very appropriate, especially with the, the endocavital, cavitational or transvaginal probe. So I keep gloves on all the time. When I'm reaching for my probe cover, I'm always going to have it um, in a gloved hand. And you put gel on the end of the probe. And now the reason for this is so that you're not going to be getting an air pocket in there. Okay, this is gonna keep the um, probe cover from causing uh, artifact. You're gonna bring the probe cover down completely covering the end. I bring it right up over the, um, the handle part of the probe so that I can hold on to the probe cover so that it's not gonna come off in the middle of the study. Okay, gives them comfort of knowing that it's always covered. Then I have, you know, they're completely undressed from the waist down, but they're totally covered with a drape sheet. Then what I do is I tell them that it's a lot more comfortable if you insert this yourself. I'm going to go ahead and put the probe under the sheet from down below. You reach down under the sheet from up above. I'm going to have, I'm going to hold on to the probe here. I'm going to have you grab, grab onto the probe down here and I'm going to have you insert it vaginally. Sometimes I say, just like you would a tampon. And then that way they know what to expect. They know how far to insert it. You're not going to put an, a tampon in all the way to the cervix. Just inside is plenty enough. Um, on the outside of, of my probe, I use surge lube or any type oh, of lubrication that's not um, been exposed. It's a lot more comfortable. If someone, uh, excuse me, let me step, would, could, if, can you use the gel? Um, you could, but I, just for my purposes, uh, Doc was saying, aren't you concerned about transmitting diseases? I'm, I'm not giving them my germs because I have my gloves on. I'm not giving them anyone else's germs because we have the probe cover on. Okay, so that's the thing. I don't, I just err on the side of giving them the best possible care. That's why we use surge loop. On my, on my patients in my, my practice, there are times when we do for people who are infertility patients and we're monitoring their follicular development, okay? When that is the case, we do not use any type of lubrication at all because even surge loop can be act as a spermicide. So we never ever do that. Okay, so we just we use? nothing. We just yeah. insert it. And you get enough contact. Well, we get enough contact because exactly there's enough right. secretions that it's not a problem. And so you can, the, right, have we have it on the inside. Oh, yeah. it's, it's on the inside. And then, right. so if you don't even want to use any at all, it's just that first, yes. when, they, when they first start to enter, it might be a little more uncomfortable. The the right. We go through and do the study. There, they've inserted it. I do whatever I need to do and show them what, what we're doing. And then when we're ready to be done, I just say, I'm gonna go, I'll go ahead and pull it out now. I pull it out and take a paper toweling, pull it off with a paper toweling. It's there and there. And then I just take my glove, pull it off inside like this. This is gonna go in a, a soak solution, Cydex, leach water kind of, um, solution. So we're protecting with the probe cover. We're also protecting with the soap. If you use Cydex, 10 minutes is tops. You don't want to get to the point of it will um, break right. down the, the membrane of the probe. So 10 minutes is tops. Mm -hmm. And you never, ever, ever want to leave it in solution overnight. It will break down the probe. So do you use the bleach water? It's good to know. $12,000. Yeah. You don't want to break that probe. How about with bleach water? Yeah. 
we same thing. You don't want to keep it in much more than ten minutes. But why? Is there a minimum time it should be in? Ten minutes. Okay, so it's kind of minimum maximum. Is about right. The same. I actually, um, throughout my day, it's there have been times when it's in there a half hour. I don't panic about it. It's just that you do not ever want to leave it in overnight because you know, as long as you know that you're doing everything you possibly can to prohibit. So we we're, think about it. We're putting probe cover on, pulling it off, putting it in solution. Next patient, putting probe cover on. So we're like going extra, extra steps to not ever uh, transmit disease. And Connie, what about the pillows on propping up? Um, if you don't have a medical table that allows you to elevate um, the buttocks or, you know, have it be working in an obstetrics um, setting, I have the ability to put the legs in the stirrups. If you have a hard table like this, um, what you do is you elevate as much as you can with pillows and then you just have them keep their legs bent like they would be in the stirrups. Yeah. Is, are the Cytex wipes as effective as Absolutely. Soaking? Absolutely. The Cytex wipes, just like um, baby wipes, you know, they have Cytex wipes. They have to be marked in such a manner that people do not use them as face wipes or hand wipes. It's very critical that people understand that these wipes are for cleaning, you know, have cleaning solution in it, but they are available and they are very effective, yes. What is the dilution for the bleach? I think, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's two to one, two units of water to one unit of bleach. So if you're using a cup of bleach, two cups of water, if you have a cylinder type thing, you can insert it in. And use it over and over again that day. That bleach is so amazing. It I is everything. Well, this is like great. You guys have got great questions. Now, Connie, um, what we do here, a lot of the manufacturers provide these probe covers. In fact, I'm going to give you a uh, number where you can get any of the supplies that you need for your ultrasound lab. And um, that's going to be through Cone Instrument. They can purchase these condoms. Um, if you run out of these condoms, um, you can what, go to the drugstore and possibly get a condom. The ones, that, but why don't you recommend that? Well, I don't recommend that you use the over-the-counter condom from the drugstore. I have personally not been able to find condoms that are do not have the spermicide or a lubricant on okay, them. Good point. Okay. And the other thing that I wanted well, why to... Why wouldn't you want the spermicide? Again, mention well, why. Well, it actually may uh, deteriorate the, the it, uh, repeated use. It might may break down the um, membrane of your probe. Um, also, it's not something that you would want to uh, introduce into the vaginal canal anyway. Um, vinyl gloves are fine. And I'll go ahead and show you how we use utilize a exam glove for a probe cover. You go to the center finger on the glove, and this time you really I to kind of double up on it. I put the gel right into that middle finger, and you can see it coming in a little bit. I try and lock it down to the very tip of it. You want to get all that air con uh, content out of there. So you're not having an air bubble in there. And I also put it on the top of the pro um, probe itself. Just take the glove. Actually, I do this by myself and I don't have to worry about um, anybody else being there. Kind of get make sure that you're right in the right yeah, finger. And, and you kind of peek, see if there's, you'll be able to tell if there's an air bubble and you'll see it. And then I just kind of flat it down like that and make sure that there's not. Then I pull the, the end of the, the glove right down over it. That way I can hold on to it. And then just go about doing it exactly the same way that you would um, the way I described it before. She having her Does this insert. interfere? And not at all. I never, it never bothers it. She has to reach around there. Like, oh, yeah. Some yeah. Actually, also it doesn't tie it. You can tie it. Some well, people do, but then it stretches. 
and yeah, and, and, so. and this could break, so you don't want to put too much pressure. Mm -hmm. But I know that there are some sonographers that actually tie it so it doesn't slip up. But in Connie's case, you I'm can see she's got a good grip on this. There's a plenty of room here, and that's not going to go anywhere. So, um, but if you run out of condoms, here is a second choice that you have. So in closing, does anybody have any questions that make sense as far as the preparation of the probe and um, the insertion of the probe, having the client insert it? Um, being very, very, you know, try to talk to her throughout the exam as you're going to make sure she's comfortable. If you are a male um, sonographer, I highly recommend at the time that you do this exam that you have a female mm -hmm. present. I think it's really important that we make sure that the client has this information when the ultrasound um, is made. When we make, when we say, okay, we're going to do an ultrasound, we've decided that this is important for you, and they are given the, the information, and you go over it in the pamphlet with them, or whoever, the counselor, mm -hmm. and they go away believe, expecting that this is a medical clinic, that they're going to a professional medical clinic. And so they don't come in thinking, oh, yuck, a, a, a vaginal, you know, they're going to have to do something vaginal. They're going, coming in saying, this is a medical clinic. They're professional people. Right. I have, um, that's going to be what is expected of me to see my baby. That might be expected of me to see my baby. So that's very important because they're educated, mm -hmm. they understand, and they come into this medical clinic. Yeah, I am so glad that you brought that up. And this can be, um, I think this needs to be explained to the client at the time you're scheduling the ultrasound by a nurse or a medical professional that if the transabdominal is inconclusive, for us to document the information we need to see, we may have to do another procedure called the transvag transvaginal ultrasound and take the time to explain it. And this is why these two brochures that I talked to you about previously are excellent to have on your file. They're, they're from AIUM. It explains the OB ultrasound, what it is. If there's any questions about, is there any harm to the patient, to the baby? that you have to fill a full urinary bladder. Everything there is, is on this. And what's nice then about the GYN one, it does go in, if your lab is planning on doing transvag, on explaining that if the um, ultrasound transabdominal is inconclusive, we may have to go and do a transvag and explain everything about the procedure, about insertion and how we can see more. So she is prepared.